Welcome to Spiritual Warfare Unit. We are a show who highlight people who live their faith by helping their community. We have one of those warriors coming in now. I hope you enjoy the show. Hey, our warrior this week is Jeff Ryle. Say good morning. Hey, good morning, everybody. All right, we're going to get to him in just a second. If this is your first time, please check out spiritualwarfareunit.com. If you're struggling with anything, please hit struggling. If you need food or clothes or baby formula or mental health or, or insurance or anything um, that you could possibly be struggling with, it's on there. If you're doing fine, you know someone that is struggling, help us help them help you. Everybody gets a win. All right, Jeff, you are from The Good Justice, and this is goodjustice.com if you guys want to check that out. And uh, tell people just a quick overview of what it is that Good Justice does. Yeah, so we partner with uh, communities, with schools, uh, with families uh, to help them reach their creative potential, what they were meant to to be and to do, not just for themselves, but for the sake of the world, for the sake of their community, for the sake of their country. Wow, that was really professional. That was, you like it? That was a good. So, huh? so this is going to be really fun because him and I go way back, actually, and, and we're going to get into that in a second. So uh, tell everybody where you're from originally. Originally from Flint, Michigan. Flint, Michigan. And, and you're, when you were growing up, would you consider yourself uh, a rich, uh, middle class, or poor? Uh, growing up, I didn't know any better. Yeah. Uh, but no, looking back, so we were, um, we, we would probably be considered on the poor side of things. Yeah, and you, yeah. Had, you had a hardworking mom. Yeah. Right? But she still puts you in, in private school. She, my mom is the hardest working lady. Uh, I mean, I am a lot of who I am today and get things done the way I get them done because of my mother. And that, that's a great testament to your mom. And uh, we went to the same high school together, and and, uh, and I wasn't considered a popular kid. I, I, I did sports, but I kind of kept to myself. And where did you think you fit in all that? Like, where was your, where was your gauge at? Um, uh, man, I don't know. Somewhere in the middle, right? Like school's weird. Yeah. High school's weird. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I always had this, uh, like, I felt like I, I needed to strive to fit in, which maybe that's what most people feel like. Yeah. So I played some of the sports too. I was never really any good at it. Yeah. You know, if they needed a good foul, they would put me in. <laughs> That type you of were stuff. the beer lamb, Bill Lamb beer of it. Yeah, exactly. Go in there and smack somebody, Jeff. We need you real quick. Okay. You got five of them. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. All right. So, uh, and you graduated, let's see, let me see if I get this right, 90, 95 or 96? So, I I actually graduated, I actually graduated from Northern Michigan School. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to get to that in yeah, a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I graduated in 90. Five. Okay. I believe it was 95. All right. Because yeah. uh, your wife was in my class. Yeah. And so we'll get to that in a little while. Yeah. So you graduated. So tell everybody. So you were going to uh, a parochial school with me and then transferred out and finished at, what was the name of it again? Yeah. So it was Manton Consolidated School or Manton High School in Northern Michigan, just north of Cadillac. Mm -hmm. All right. So you get done with that and you're graduated and all smart now. And then what happens then? Yeah. So, um, uh, my wife and I were high school sweethearts, and uh, long story short, uh, you know, we found out we were uh, pregnant. Uh, so my wife was about three months pregnant, and um, how old were you when that happened? Oh Lord, I was young. I was eighteen, maybe still. Eighteen. Eighteen, maybe still, and uh, and so we got married, and that this uh, two weeks from now, that'll be twenty-seven years ago. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. All right, yeah. so did she? Did she move with you? Did you move with her? Like, how did that work? We stayed in the Flint area. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, we stayed in the Flint area. All right. And um, and uh, any college for you at all? Zero. Zero college. All right. So what did you start doing? Uh, so like kind I, of an intense time, right? Well, it's super intense, right? You know, because, like, I'm, I'm a kid myself. Right. And I got a kid coming, and we got to make this happen. So, you know, it, it, I grew up where, you know, like, no wasn't an option. Right. I can't do this really wasn't an option. I had a single mom taking care of, you know, yeah. four and five and six kids and grandkids yeah. and making it happen, yeah. you know? And so uh, I worked for a daycare, believe it or not, for a little, for, <laughs> for a short time. Yeah, I know. It's crazy, <laughs> crazy stuff. Sorry. Uh, then uh, I, you remember when they used to do like the, the kiosks up at the mall yeah. for Christmas? Yeah. I worked at one of those. Nice. Um, and then I had a guy um, just kind of step into my life and say, um, he actually knew knew Sarah, knew my wife yeah. um, for a long time and, and from my in-laws church and said, hey, we, 
I need, I need a laborer. I need someone to come work for me. And he was willing to pay me like double what minimum wage was at the time. Wow. I'm all freaked out. Yeah. Right. And, uh, just super kind of him. Cause I mean, I had like wood shop knowledge right? and, uh, was able to really give me some hands-on experience and help me navigate financially forward what that looks like. And right. yeah, there's a lot to the story, man, but that's, how yeah, well, that's what started. we're here for. Yeah, that's, how, is, that's how it started. So, yeah. So you're in this point. Cause like, I didn't need, I didn't preset my, my, my people on, on what, who you are. They have no clue. Right. Yeah. So this is all going to hit them pretty solid. Yeah. So, all right. So 18, 19, 20 is uh, Sarah's going to school, not going to school. Uh, she was, she was going to university and okay. then we found out she was pregnant. She ended up coming back and, Mm -hmm. Actually working for a local company she had worked for in high school. All right. So, yeah. so when when did the call come? Like, you know, God's in your life. We're going to be really real Christians <laughs> and not just you know, hey, uh, how are you, people? Oh man. So you know, you know, was that early or I, was it like? So I let me let me just give a little bit of if it's okay. Um, I grew up in church and all of that. Yeah. Okay. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the good, the bad. And whatever. Yep. Okay. Um, so I don't. I don't have any regrets from that. But the truth is, is that I did see some things that I was a little bit like, yeah, right. Yeah. No thanks. So my wife and I tried to go to uh, go to church for a little while and tried to be whatever a good Christian looks like. Um, right. I'm still not convinced of what that actually is. Right. And so, um, uh, and then one day, man, we were just like, why are we striving to do all this stuff? Mm -hmm. And we had actually quit. Like, how long had you been going before you made this decision? It had to be a minute, right? A couple years, maybe. Yeah. A couple years, maybe. And I had a buddy move back into town, and he said, hey, we're going to go over here and try this church, and um, why don't you come with us? And uh, so Sarah and I were like, sure, man, whatever. Yeah, why yeah. not? Yeah, why not? Yeah. You know, and so we went over and, and you know, sat in the back, and, and uh, there, was, there was something about that place and something about those people where I was like, okay, maybe the, maybe parts of the God that were shown to me growing up weren't necessarily God. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he is full of, full of grace. Yeah. Like kindness. I remember that yeah. moment where like, maybe it's not all just rules. Yeah. Maybe like there's a relationship. Maybe, yeah. maybe that's it. Maybe I fit. Maybe yeah. I fit. Right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So yeah, just. All right. So a couple of, yeah. so this makes you what? 2021? 2021. Yep. All right. So 21. You find this place, yeah, and you hit, and then what happens? Um, you know, so you know, we found opportunity to serve the youth, you know, and so we would we would serve the youth and whatever events they had going on or, mm -hmm. or different things like that, and then, um, you know, it really it was like, hey, you know, what do you need? Sarah and I will help do that. Right, you we'll know? fill a hole. Fill yeah, a hole. My, yeah, my, you know, I, I'm a doer. Yep. You know, I, I don't like to sit around and twiddle my thumb. <laughs> right. I like to get crap done. Yep. And so, you know, somewhere along the journey, uh, my my best friend said, uh, "Hey, uh, I'm going to Peru. I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to Peru in January." So this is all yeah. during that 2021, yeah, yeah, 2022. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's all like, right. "Yeah, so I, I, the church is going, and I'm going to go with them." And uh, and you stop me anytime, man. If I get ahead of you, no, I'm no, this, but, I will. Yeah. So yeah. So I said, uh, well, I want to go to Peru. Yeah. How much is that? <laughs> you know, I want to go to Peru. Shoot, they're still <laughs> discovering stuff there. Yeah. You know, I like Peru too, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was just, well, I was just like, I'm sure I'll go because they were going to be building. Yeah. And and I worked for a construction company, and and I, I at that point had a pretty good idea of what I was doing. So you could be a help. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but here's the thing. Like I tell people, like I didn't go to Peru because I loved God or people. Like I'm real honest about that. Yeah. I went because it was Peru and they were going to be building and okay. We're <laughs> and it was Peru. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're like, it's the, check mark. <laughs> it's the Amazon rainforest, right? Yeah. Like, Oh, you haven't know. been there. I've been there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that really, so you go and what happened? Like, what was your experience? So, um, the building part of it sucked real bad. <laughs> yeah, I bet. You know, they were, they, you know, it's, it's 5 million degrees. Right. You know, and just constant humidity. And we were working, uh, tearing down this building under a tin roof mm. with a tractor inside that was filling it full of exhaust. Yeah, it was, that part was not so great. Okay. <laughs> All right. That being said, yeah. uh, it's a community. I say a community. It's a city in the middle of the Amazon. The only way to get there is by boat or by uh, plane. Wow. Of 750,000 people. 750,000. 750,000 people. 
Okay, hold on. How do that many people live in that area when you can only get there by boat or plane? Because people just continue to come. So uh, originally wow. there was like the rubber trade was there um, and stuff like that. There's okay, like rubber trees and stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, like Firestone. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they all, they all went there and tore it up long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're not so much liked anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. But anyway, that's kind of how the whole thing even started there. And now there's right. a, there's tourism and, and things like that. But really, you, you, to answer your question, um, tearing down that building, building all of that, that wasn't transfer, transformational for me. Right. But I started to walk around the city. And it's funny when you're in the midst of something, how you don't see it. So I grew up one of those poor kids. Yeah. But I didn't necessarily know it. Right. And now all of a sudden I'm in this, this city of 750,000 people and I'm seeing children literally prostituted uh, uh, or, or taken advantage of, uh, you know, go sell these uh, pieces of gum, go sell these cigarettes, go sell these whatever, these candies. Yeah. And yet these same kids are not eating. Right. You know, I'm seeing uh, those with special needs just discarded. Right. You know, I'm seeing the elderly um, just treated like garbage. Mm. You know, if, if the, they can no longer produce, you know, just kind of push to the, to the margins of society. And then I saw so many things. And I just, that put us in motion, put us in a direction of, dude, now that you've seen this. Hey, you can't unsee it. Yeah, and then how do you not do something when you know it exists, right? Yeah. yeah. Man, you you, you got to do something. And so, right. um, <clears throat> yeah, that just started this conversation I was having and keep in mind I've known my wife since high school right and uh, I'm a guy who can just like do and and I don't need a whole lot of preparation or, or any of that type of stuff yeah my wife then uh, early in our marriage uh, and she would she would tell you this um, she needed to know 100 percent yeah she had to know that she knew that she knew yeah got it now not so much <laughs> now we're just like okay yeah. go with it Right. So, so fast forward a year, I was back in that same city in Iquitos, Peru. Okay. It's getting exposed to even more of the need. Wow. Um, I want to say later on that summer, uh, I was in another country. Matter of fact, I know it was the same year. I was in another country, and I saw the need there, and it just became abundantly clear to me. Yeah, it's something. This is it. Yeah, something's. I don't know. Somebody's got to do something yeah. here. This is this is nonsense. And so I remember going to who was my pastor at the time. He's he's since retired. He's my friend Bruce Garner. Mm -hmm. uh, just if, if you know him, he's just a great guy, mm -hmm. full of full of grace and, and kindness, and and just said, hey man, like I don't really know what this means, but I think. And so um, <laughs> at that point, I'd already talked to my wife, you know. And what and, was her initial reaction? So here's the thing. <laughs> um, we we lived out in the country and we were we were going out for a walk. Yeah, and uh, and I'm sweating bullets here a little bit because I'm like <laughs> I know that she has to know, man, and, and I don't even really know. Yeah. So I just said, hey, so I think you know, we were talking about my experience. And I said, I, I think um, things are are going to change for us. I'm not so sure that you know because at that point, so our goals were. Have a house out in the middle of nowhere. Have a second yeah. home up in up in uh, northern Michigan somewhere, yeah. and have a business that was prosperous. We have all right. All right, hold on. We got to go to our first right. break. That's this good. is a great place to take spot. We'll find out what comes back. If you're not going to spiritualwarfareunit.com yet, please do that on YouTube. Like, share, and subscribe. Sit tight. We'll be right back. Sarah and her husband fell in love watching the sunset. So they made it a point to watch the sunset together every day. Sunsets were their love language, and this was their favorite spot. Our friendly, professional caregivers add joy and meaning to life's everyday moments. Learn how we help seniors live happy and independent lives at home at ComfortKeepers.com today. All right, welcome back to the Warriors Way. Our warrior this week is Jeff Ryle, and he's from Good Justice. And he was just finishing up about his first trip out there and how he was making neighborhoods, basically. And uh, so you get back and <clears throat> give us like kind of a, a view of what it's like because you got to like like you realize you were doing something, and then and and then you're like, what's the process? And we got to tell people what we're doing, and how do we get more people involved? Like, how did all that kind of develop? Yeah, so. You know, uh, like I mentioned earlier, Malawi is beautiful and the people are beautiful. 
and and for a number of reasons, um, the country has struggled. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm just not one of those guys that sits on the struggle. I say, how do we move right. from here? Um, and there's some things that we have learned over the years, uh, food security, uh, education, and housing, uh, along with uh, health care, mm -hmm. um, even in, the, in, their, in their basic forms. Mm -hmm. If we can help communities get those things established, uh, then cycles of poverty are broken. And so one of, one of the things that's huge in Malawi is people having their own home. Mm. And so... Like I said, man, we work out in the bush. We are way out in the middle of freaking nowhere. And like so GPS not located. Well, I mean, like <laughs> I could pull it up on Google Maps and show you, but it's it's out there, right? Yeah. And so um, we said, well, you know, what does it look like for us yeah. to serve here? Right. And, uh, you know, we have some family from Malawi, and so it's very important for us to serve there. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, in 2015, they had... Uh, abnormal monsoonal rains come through and just start washing out large portions of the country. Wow. Like washing, like if, if they had chickens, if they had, you know, goats, uh, pigs, whatever. Farming. Homes. Yeah. It was just washing stuff away. Wow. So initially, uh, we said, well, we need to respond to this. And so we did with just uh, temporary like tarp type emergency response type stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then we were like, okay, now we need to help rebuild. And so that really launched our Rebuild Malawi campaign. Mm -hmm. And so that was 2015. And like I said, on average, we build about 42 homes a year. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, their basic structures, uh, they are uh, fired adobe brick. Okay, what does that mean, fired so, adobe brick? So what that means is <clears throat> they they make their bricks out of mud, uh, straw, grass, whatever. They form mm -hmm. them, they put them in the sun to harden, and then they stack them, then they put fire from four different sides to, to harden them. So we're talking like Egyptian like <coughs> bricks. Yes, sir. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Like, 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 wow. Yeah. So, so these homes are roughly 18 foot by 18 foot. Uh, they will have, um, like I said, they're very, very, there's no electricity. There's no plumbing. Yeah. You know, because the well, truth is where a lot of these people live, there is none of those. There are none of those things. Right. Um, and then they will have a regular, like, aluminum roof. Okay. So, yeah. hold on a second. Like, so how do they get candles and stuff? Like, how does that work? Yeah. So, there will be markets. Oh, there yep. is. Oh, yeah. There, there, there's, there's markets everywhere. I okay. mean, there's still commerce. Okay. Um, but, I mean... Uh, they're just not going to run electricity to places where people can't yeah. pay for it. I was just like, you yeah. said the bush, so I'm sitting there thinking, man. Nah, man, yeah. there'll be there'll be a road in there, you know, and people a travel. Road. <laughs> well, it, no, that's the truth, you know, and, yeah. you know, or people traveling through, or if so and so is going into a larger city, hey, can you pick me up this and they'll gotcha. bring it back, yeah. Man, so so like in my head, I'm I'm picturing like the Indiana Jones situation, sure, you know, sure. like Temple of Doom, where he goes in the town and there's a little market square yeah. place and then yeah. <clears throat> just in the middle of just absolute nowhere and these and and these people need help with this stuff like what how many people did you say was living there again in the in the country of malawi yeah so i don't know the current stats um what they used to say is there were 14 million people <sighs> in the country of malawi wow. with upwards of three million orphans wow yeah the math on that one third is orphans yeah. That's great. One fifth is orphans. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah. All right. And so, how many's in this town that you're helping to build? Like, how many people? Uh, that's that. I don't know that either. Okay. Yeah. That that. Are I we know. talking like, if you had to guess, like twenty thousand, fifty thousand, hundred thousand? No, 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 no. So, so I mean, where we're at, like uh, a rural community or a village. Yeah. Um, we're talking 100, 150. Oh, okay. In in the individual community, I got what you're saying. Now you'll have a community here, and then you'll have one over there, and then you'll have one over there. And what's the distance between them? Just so um, in my head there. like a mile, half couple, mile, couple miles, maybe. Couple mile, couple miles, maybe. All right, so you're you're kind of building a community, right? From yeah. a love oriented, faith based situation, helping these people just to help them because they need the help. That's basically. If do I have that right? Yeah. So we yeah. are 100 percent um, locally run. So my director in Malawi is Malawian. Okay. My director in Honduras is Honduran. So uh, people say, well, how do you pick the families? Well, first of all, I don't pick them. Okay. Uh, I trust uh, my staff that the process. that's on the ground, yeah. who knows the situations, knows the families, can interview, uh, interview the families right. um, and find the greatest need. Okay. Um, and then really... 
step into that. Gosh, you know, how yeah. do you find the greatest need with a whole place that has need? I There's mean, a beautiful thing. Wow. I don't. I don't. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Like. No, man. I've just, I've just got to. I've just got to trust that you know, my staff is really involved in the communities. Right. If you're looking for a life application class for your small groups at church, please go to spiritualwarfareunit.com and we have a Proverbs-based 18-video life application class that will be just the fit for you. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. We are going to be talking about the ungodly man. The ungodly man, remembering that these are uh, the Bible's way, God's way of identifying personalities. And this week is the ungodly man, so we're going to Find a biblical definition, so if you can turn into your Bibles to Proverbs 16, 27. Proverbs 16, 27, we're going to see the definition of what God calls an ungodly man. Again, we're in the uh, King James Bible. I've given you a definitional sheet and page for the definitions, of which we will uh, give you the definitions as we're going through this. And uh, let's take a look. Proverbs 16, 27, an ungodly man diggeth up evil, and his lips there is a burning fire. First thing is, is an ungodly man digs up evil. So first thing, when you're digging something, doesn't that mean you're looking for something? You're trying to find something, and the thing that they're trying to find is evil. Now we know the definition of the word evil is morally wrong action with the intent to hurt. They're trying to dig up a way to hurt somebody. That means they are searching for a way to hurt you. What's a real life example of that? Have you ever had somebody that, say, got in a divorce? So you get to, <laughs> so you get to stuff over there. Now explain to people. Oh my gosh, I'm tearing. Yeah. Give me a second. Woo, that was funny. God, just to have I've that. I've got a disgusting story if you want that one too. Just let me Listen, know. Listen, you can't throw stuff like that at me without telling. <laughs> now I got to know. Like, what? Give it to me. I got to have it. Okay, so it's it's the remainder of the boat flipping story. Okay. You want the remainder of it? Well, yeah, you can't okay, just throw so, it out so there and the not deal. give so, it. So we're up there, up there in these uh, in these villages uh, checking these wells to make sure they're working correctly. And, yeah. and what I have learned over all these years is when you are a guest in a community, in, a, in somebody's home, and you're getting something to eat or to drink. Okay. And to refuse is very rude. Wow, okay. And so now, let me paint the picture. We are up the Amazon and then up the, uh, the uh, Tawaiyo River. Okay. Okay, so we are... We're out there. Way, way we're out, there, out there. Okay. Like, you can get further out, but, I mean, we're probably two to four hours from the, the big city, okay? Wow. Yeah, by boat. So we're a ways up there. So the first community, they give us um, lemonade. Like, grab lemons out of the tree, squeeze it. The water they used was from the well. Like, that's what they give. No problem. Yeah. Second community we go to, um, we're welcomed into this great big, I think it was a, just a common building. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's my friend who's lived in Iquitos, Peru, from Minnesota for like 25 years here. Me, a guy I had brought, and then this guy's dad is sitting over here. And they're all speaking in Spanish at that point. I didn't know what was being said. Right. I understand now. I didn't then. <laughs> yeah. And so they're just talking. The, the, the chief's wife comes in with uh, like a silver platter and some silver cups. Um, uh -oh. Kind of think like Coleman camping. Okay. Type stuff. You know, Got she it. comes in. Nicest stuff I'm sure she had. Mm -hmm. And so she bends down and she offers my friend next to me here a cup, then me, and works her way around. And, man, you, I never want to I, – I, I, I'm desperately trying to be a better person. Right. But even then, I was like, I knew better than to offend somebody. Yeah. So you could say something in English, and they're still going to wonder what you're saying, even if they don't understand English. Yeah. And if you make a face, oh, no, no good. So – my friend oh, no. puts his cup up to his mouth, right in front of his mouth, to block his mouth. It says very quietly to me, Jeff, you do not have to drink this. You probably won't offend them. And <laughs> probably I, Well, yeah, right? Like, I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm not here to offend people. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so um, I look at it, and I see that it, it has pigmentation like milk, oh. but there's no refrigeration. Mm -mm. And I mm -mm. don't know who or what this might have come from. Mm-mm. And so I start to take a drink, and there's chunks in it. <laughs> oh, oh so, no. I, you know, you can't make faces. 
Oh, I already offended. Oh, sorry. So, so, My bad. So um, well, another thing I've learned is if you don't care for something, let it last for as long as you're there. Because if you finish early, you're getting more. Really? Yeah. So I get it about halfway gone, and my buddy puts his cup back up to his mouth to block his mouth and says, Jeff, you do not have to drink this. And this is a pretty <coughs> direct guy, and I'm thinking, oh, no. Yeah. This is not good, right? Yeah. So um, I finish it as we're leaving, chunks it all. <laughs> we get in the boat, and from, from that community, from that village to the next village, um, this guy and his dad, are, thank you so much. You honored them. I, you know, I thank you for doing that. They're kind of going, it seemed a little bit to me like over the top, yeah. right? Cause I'm like, it sucked. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But, um, hold on. What it tastes like. Give me your best. Maybe like, it sounds like almost cottage cheese, but not quite. And you're drinking a it. salty type, um, Garbage juice. It, I don't know. It, it was it, salty it, it, garbage it, juice. It, it wasn't good. Okay, it was not good. <laughs> what a great to so, Okay, salty. So we got it. So between the second village and the third village, they're telling you thank you so much. Yep, yep. Okay. Yeah. Visit the second, third village. They gave us more lemonade. No big deal. We're coming back down river. Yeah. We run out of gas. Okay. Now there's not a speedway. Yeah. So we're yelling up to villages. Do you have any petrol? Do you have any gas? Well, because we didn't have to listen to the roar of the engine now. Uh. Uh. I say to them, hey, what was that that we had back there in that second community? Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, that's the big M. The big M. Which, that doesn't sound good. No. Yeah, it's not the little one or the medium no, size. No, it's, it's, the, big it's one. the big one. And I said, oh, okay. They said, that's called Masato. Masato. Yeah, and so what they do, the women in that village uh, will, take the, will take the outside of the, yuka, uh, the skin of the yucca off. The yucca? And, yeah, like yucca. It's like a root type potato-ish type thing that grows under the ground and okay. take the outside skin off and they'll start biting it up, chewing it up and get a real good saliva and mush going and they'll spit it in the cups mm. or they'll put it in a big container and let it sit outside and ferment. That's that's my fate. I'm, I'm, I'm rude again, aren't I? Oh, oh, I, I um, this is going to be a great place to take a break because you that's a winning story right there. Oh my gosh. Uh, please go to... <laughs> Good justice, I can't even see right now. Goodjustice.com. Check that out. Spiritual Warfare Unit. Like, share, and subscribe. Sit tight. We got one more. We'll be right back. Thank you for tuning in to our show. If you'd like to see the full episode, please go to Spiritual Warfare Unit on YouTube, and you can like and subscribe. If you know anyone that's a new Christian and they're looking to get help in their new life, please go to SpiritualWarfareUnit.com, and you can click on our life application class to help them. If you know anybody that's working in a nonprofit that deserves to get some marketing, have them go to Spiritual Warfare Unit on YouTube, like and subscribe, and we will pick one person a month to be on our show. I hope it's a person that you're going for. We'll see you next time.